Hi everybody, welcome back to my YouTube channel, Data Analysis with Dr. Veronica. In this video, we will look at how to do BVA analysis in Excel. BVA means budget versus actual. This is a very important analysis to, to know how to do, especially for accountants, for financial analysts, you would like to match the actual expenses against the budget so that you can find the variances and you can even create some beautiful looking charts with this analysis and present it to management. So in this video, we will see how to prepare a simple BVA analysis from scratch. We will also look at how to determine a variance from a BVA analysis. And of course, we will add charts to the simple BVA analysis that we will do. Sometimes at work, we are faced with situations where we need to do budget versus actual analysis to determine how much is spent per budget line, what is left unspent or overspent as the case may be. And this is what is known as the variance. If this is the first time you're stopping by my YouTube channel, subscribe, like this video and share with your colleagues and friends. If you are a returning subscriber, thank you for coming back. I always say in my previous videos, the best way to learn how to use Microsoft Excel is to learn by doing. You have to practice as you watch the video. To get this practice file, find the link in the description box. Please download the file and practice as you watch so that you can gain mastery of how to develop a BVA analysis from scratch. The best part is that a BVA analysis can be done on any version of Excel or spreadsheets generally. There are no complex formulas. For this particular simple BVA analysis that we will do, we will make use of sum ifs or just the normal sum if. We will also make use of subtotal. We would make use of the sum function. And of course, at the end, we will create a beautiful chart. So this is why you can do it on any version of Excel that you have, and you can do it on any form of spreadsheet like Google Sheets. If you do not know how to use a sum if function, I have a very elaborate video on how to use sum if. The link to that video is in the description box. Please do well to watch that video and see how you can use the sum if function. It's a super important function for users of Microsoft Excel. For a budget versus actual analysis, what we need are two major things. You need the budget and you need the actual expenses. The actual expenses can come in the form of the a list of expenses or a general ledger. The budget is the normal budget that was prepared at the beginning of the year or before the project starts, as the case may be. So what we need is the budget and the list of expenses, which we already have here. So this is a small budget for a livelihood support project. And I'm going to make this bold. This project is planned to last for 12 months. The project start and end date is the 1st of January 2023 to the 31st of December 2023. And here you have the project activities budgeted. You have personnel costs and you also have administrative costs. At the end of the project year, we have this list of expenses right here. And then we are required to do a budget versus actual analysis per budget line because we need to know the situation of spending for this particular budget per budget line. How we can get this information is through a budget versus actual analysis. So the first thing that we do is to get the actual expenses matched per budget line, just like we have here. The budget is divided into different budget lines. So we will get the actual expenses per budget line. And to do this, we will use the sum if function. So here I am just going to put this actual and I will use the equal to sign sum if, open the bracket. The first argument in the sum if function is asking for the range. The range is the column that contains your criteria. So the column that contains the criteria, it 
is here on the sheet list of expenses. So I'm just going to select the entire column, put the comma separator. The next argument is the criteria and the criteria is the budget lines. So I put the comma separator and the next argument is the sum range. The sum range is the column that I want to add. And in this case, I want to get the totals of the actuals per budget line. So I'll go back to list of expenses and select column H. And I will close the bracket. And this is the result that I have for this. We can see that under budget line 1.1, which is non-conditional cash grant for income generating activities, why we'll have had a total budget of 50,000 USD. Actual expenses for this budget line is 48,000 USD. So what this tells us is that we spent less than what was budgeted. And I'm going to drag this down so that we can see what is applicable to other budget lines. And my actual column is good to go like this. I am going to do the totals, the heading totals, just like I have here. And from what I can see from the templates that came, it was a subtotal function that was used. So I will continue using the subtotal. So subtotal, open the bracket. I choose nine, which is sum. So I'll write nine there and I'm going to select all the cells that I want to add. Mind you, I am trying to look for the subtotal only for the project activities. So this is why I ended here. I press the enter button on my keyboard. I will put the comma separator to make it look like numbers. And I will do the same for, and close the brackets. And this is the total that I have. And I'm going to do the next. I will do the same for the administrative costs. I do the subtotal, open the brackets nine because I want to do the sum. And I will add all the items that is on the administrative costs. So this is the total that I have. Now to see for the, grand total, what formula was used? It's the addition. It was a simple addition that was done. So I would do the same. This plus the total of the personnel plus the total of the admin cost. And here you go. I am going to also, to get the, the formatting here to be the same like we will have for the actuals, I will just come here, click on Format Painter so that I can copy only the formatting and I come to column J and I press the enter button on my keyboard and this is what I have. All the formats for this particular column has been copied to the actual column. So I have this beautifully laid out, beautifully done. And we can see at a glance that for the project activities, we had a total of $72,450 budgeted. But at the end of the project, we only spend 70,310. So this means there is a variance. To calculate the variance, what do we do? So the variance is basically the budget minus the actual. Some people will prefer to do the actual minus the budget or the budget minus the actual. It depends on what is going to be very convenient for you to use. But in this case, we will use the budget minus the actual simple just like this budget minus actual and here we go and i am going to drag this down to apply up till the end to copy the formats from this column to this column i will do the same first of all highlight column j click on format painter and then apply the formats to column l and i have this nicely laid out for me. Now, this is the variance in absolute figures. So I'm going to write here absolute and I stretch this open. Another analysis that is usually done is to see the variance in percentages, to see the variance in relative, in the relative measure. And to do this, I'm just going to do the actual over the budget. So to see how much was spent versus how much was budgeted, the variance in a relative way. So um, I will apply this, the actual divided by the budget. And this is a solution that I have. I will put this in percentage and then we can see in terms of percentages what the variance looks like. So what this says is that 97% of the total budgeted amount for the project activity costs was spent. 
the remaining 3% is not spent. I will apply the formatting to column M as well. So I first select column L and click on Format Painter. Apply the formatting to column M. To make this look even nicer, I'm going to use the thick outside borders and I'll do the same for this too. Thick outside borders to make it look even more presentable. And I see that the percentage sign has gone out. So I will just highlight the entire column M and apply the percentages to it. So this is what it looks like. What this tells us is that 98% of the total budget was spent. So we have this unspent amount, $2,477 was unspent. I could do something else to make it even more appealing to the eyes because here we have some underspent amount and here we have some overspent amount as well, which is the one in negative. The one in negative basically means that what we actually spent for that budget line was more than what was budgeted for that budget line. It depends on what you need this report for, but in some instances, this can be acceptable, especially because we have some underspending on some lines that can make up for some overspent amounts. But let us see how to use conditional formatting to put the overspent amounts in a different formatting color and to put the underspent amount in a different formatting color. So I select the entire column L using conditional formatting so that at first glance, we can see which particular cells need to be considered during the decision-making process. So I highlight the entire column L. I go to conditional formatting, highlight cell rules, less than so format cells that are less than zero and i come here okay but if i want to do this to show in bright red i can change this less than zero and i click down here customized format i come here and i select the red so i go to okay so what this shows is all the numbers that are less than zero of course have been highlighted in bright red for everybody to see at first glance that there are probably issues with these particular cells and budget lines that needs to be reviewed even further. After this is done, the next thing that I would like to do is to add charts just to make the budget versus actual analysis report to look more interesting. What we can take out from this activity is that we can present the chapter headings in a, in a chart format so that at first glance, somebody can see which of these chapter headings is doing better than the other. From the numbers, the total budgeted amount for personnel costs is the same as the actual that was spent. What this probably means is that all the personnel cost that was budgeted for was paid. So I'm going to select only the chapter headings and I select it by click the project activities first, hold down the control button on my keyboard and I select personnel cost, admin cost. I select the total cost as well, the total budgeted amounts and I select the total actuals for these chapter headings and I go to insert, recommended charts. I go to all charts and I, I select the clustered column and I click on okay. So the clustered column chart is up and we are going to do some formatting to this chart just to make it look even more beautiful and appealing to the eyes. Here we have series one and series two. Series one is supposed to be the budget and series two is supposed to be the actual. So we will change this to represent what they actually mean. So to do that, you go to select data, edit, series one will now be called budget. I press okay. I go to series two and edit. This will be called actuals. And I select okay. And here we have the budget versus the actuals. This is super easy to understand. At first glance, someone would know that for the project activities, we have some savings because the actual spend, the actual expenditures is less than the budgeted costs for each of the budget lines. And for personnel, we have the same height of bars. 
So for this one, we do not need to worry because we know that all the amounts budgeted is equal to what was totally spent on personnel costs. For administrative costs, of course, we still have, we have variance, but it's very little. And this is why we have this small gap or we have this small difference in height. Just to make this look even more appealing, so we are going to give this chart a title and we can do that here. I'm going to merge the cells and I will call it budget versus actual for livelihood, best budget versus actual analysis for livelihood support project. And I can extend this on merge and merge again. I put this in bold, control B, and I would take this particular background color using the format painter, and I want to apply that here. So this is what I have. I can remove this chat title by selecting it and just deleting on my keyboard. I will also expand this chat to cover the area that I am interested in. I also want to remove the grid lines and I just remove the grid lines. This is what I have for the budget versus actual analysis for the livelihood support project. Not as difficult as one would think, but this is the beautiful outcome that we have at the end of the day. If you love this content, give me a thumbs up. And in subsequent videos, we will do budget versus actual analysis for more complicated scenarios and we will see how we can also track the analysis for monthly expenses versus monthly budgeted costs. In this situation, we used the cumulative actuals to match against the cumulative budget. But in subsequent videos, we will see how we can do this analysis per month. See you in the next video.